Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Concept Tech 2018. I am Sunanda Manke and I am starting a new video series, a complete video series on MOSFET. This series is aimed at discussing all aspects of MOSFET, starting with the basic concepts, the MOSFET types, its physical structure, the operation, the characteristic curves, the CAC analysis. It will cover all analog and digital applications which will include amplifiers, waveform generators, differential and operational amplifier as integrated circuits, CMOS based logic circuits. I also plan to include the VLSI circuits. So it will be a journey from MOS to VLSI and I hope that it will be beneficial for you all. The first part in this series of MOSFET gives us the introduction of the MOSFET. It will cover the basic concepts of three terminal devices like BJT, FET and then MOSFET and then we'll discuss the different types of MOSFETs in this particular part. We'll uh, start with the concepts of transistor because MOSFET is a type of transistor. Transistor is basically a three terminal device and it's a two port device as shown in the figure. As a two port device requires four terminals and transistor being three terminal device, one of the terminal will be common to both input and output side. And this gives rise to different configurations in which the transistor can be used. And transistor exhibits a specific characteristic in each configuration. In transistors, the input signal, whether it is voltage or current, it controls the output current. And thus, the applications in which any transistor can be used either as an amplifier or as a switch are given here. Uh, we can use it as a switch in digital circuits and memory devices. The two types of uh, transistors are the bipolar junction transistor and the field effect transistor BJT and FET. As we are interested in field effect transistor, so we will see here how FET fares well compared to BJT. BJT is a bipolar device and the prefix in BJT by that indicates the conduction level is a function of two charge carriers, electrons and holes. FET is a unipolar device and it depends solely on either electrons or holes. If the conduction is through electrons, we call it N-channel FET and if it is through holes, we call it P-channel FET. PJT is a current control device whereas the FET is a voltage control device. You can see in the figure in BJT, the input current that is the emitter current controls the output current which is the collector current and in FET, the gate voltage controls the output current. So voltage is controlling the output current so it is called a voltage control device. One of the most important characteristics of FET is its high input impedance and it is quite high compared to the BJT. It varies between 1 mega ohms to hundreds of mega ohms. This is a very important characteristic in the design of linear AC amplifier systems. They have low power requirement and small area requirement and that is the reason they are very useful in IC designs, integrated circuit designs or we call it VLSI designs. They are more temperature stable compared to BJT. They are less noisy. But the BJT transistors have a much higher sensitivity to changes in the applied signal. That is the variation in output current is typically a great deal more for BJT then compared to FET for the same change in the applied voltage and that is the reason typical AC voltage gain of BJT amplifiers are more than FET and so FET offers small gain bandwidth product compared to BJT. So these are the characteristics of FET uh, compared to BJT. Now the FET that is field effect transistor it is a three terminal device. The terminals are named as source, drain and gate. 
the function of the source terminal is to supply the charge carriers drain collects the charge carriers and gate basically controls the number of charge carriers which pass through channel that is channel is between source and drain through which the charge carriers are transported so you can see here in the figure we have a n channel fed and the channel is having two terminal source and drain and the gate voltage is controlling the transport of charges from source to drain as the gate voltage compared to source changes the depletion layer and it obstructs the electrons flowing from source to drain here we have analogy of fed with source of water now this water pressure can be linked to the applied voltage from drain to source which establishes a flow of water from the source the gate here in the tap is controlling the flow of water similar to the gate voltage which controls the flow of electrons from source to drain so with the help of this analogy we can understand the working of a field effect transistor there are basically three types of feds field effect transistors first is junction field effect transistor and you can see in the picture here a piece of n type semiconductor is given the lower end of this semiconductor is the source and the upper end is the drain the supply voltage vdd at the drain terminal forces free electrons to flow from source to drain here two areas of p type semiconductors are diffused into n type semiconductors and these two p regions they are connected internally to, uh, to get a single external gate lead the voltage on the gate with respect to source generates depletion region on two p n junctions and thereby it controls the flow of current the second is metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor which is the point of interest for us which we'll discuss in detail in the coming slide so this mosfet basically is a very important device which is used in the design and construction of integrated circuits its thermal stability and other general characteristics make it extremely popular in computer circuit designs and that is the reason you are watching this series the difference between jfet and mosfet is clear from this picture here the gate is insulated from source and drain using sio2 layer and this results in very low gate current and it offers very high input resistance we'll discuss it in detail in the coming slide the third type of fet is mesfet metal semiconductor field effect transistor uh, and it takes the full advantage of high speed characteristics of gallium arsenide as the base semiconductor material you can see in the picture uh, this mesfet is uh, uh, basically it achieves higher speeds in rf design and computer designs here the gate terminal is connected directly to a metallic conductor lying directly against the n channel between the source and the drain so we do not have an insulating layer in between and the use of a short key barrier at the gate is the major difference between the mosfet which em employs a insulating layer the absence of this insulating layer reduces the distance between the metal contact surface of the gate and the semiconductor layer and this results in a lower level of stray capacitances between the two surfaces thereby achieving higher speeds now coming to mosfet and how it gets this name the drain source and gate connections they are metals oxide basically is the silicon dioxide insulating layer which insulates gate from the channel and the term semiconductor is used for the basic structure on which the n and p type regions are diffused 
Thereby we get this name metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. The insulating layer between the gate and the channel has resulted in another name for the device that is called insulated gate fit or IG fit. The insulating layer of silicon dioxide accounts for very high input impedance and which is desirable. Compared to BJT, MOSFETs are made quite small. They require very small area on the silicon chip and their manufacturing process is relatively simple. Their operation requires comparatively low power. In the integrated circuits, very few or no resistances are used. All the circuits are made using MOSFETs only. And all these properties have made it possible to package large number of MOSFETs, more than say 200 million on a single IC chip to implement very sophisticated VLSI circuits which are used in memory or microprocessor applications. Analog circuits such as amplifiers and filters are also implemented in MOS technology. Both analog and digital functions are increasingly being implemented on the same IC chip and that is known as mixed signal designing. Let's see the types of MOSFETs. MOSFETs can be classified based on the mode of operation and in this category we have two types depletion mode and enhancement mode. Similarly based on the device or the channel which we use they are classified as P channel MOSFET, N channel MOSFET and CMOS which complementary MOS which is a combination of NMOS and PMOS. Now we'll discuss the different types of MOSFETs. We'll start with depletion mode MOSFET. As you can see in the figure, in depletion mode MOSFET, a piece of N material with an insulated gate on the left and P substrate on the right. The P region is called the substrate. It is actually the body on which source and drain terminals are diffused. The electron flows from source to drain and they pass through the narrow channel between the gate and the P substrate. So we do have a channel between source and drain in case of depletion MOSFET and we have a thin layer of silicon dioxide which is deposited on the left side of the channel and this basically is an insulator which insulates the metallic gate from the channel and this results in negligible gate current even when the gate voltage is positive. These are the symbols of depletion type MOSFET. You can see here the channel is continuous that is source and drain are connected by a single line and the arrow on the source terminal basically differentiates between P channel and N channel MOSFET. If the arrow is pointing inside that is the current is flowing from source to drain then it is P channel MOSFET and when the current flows from drain to source it is N channel MOSFET. The second type is enhancement type MOSFET. Basically depletion MOSFET was a part of evolution towards the enhancement type of MOSFET. Uh, the figure shows here again we have the P substrat here as before but now this substrat extends all the way to the silicon dioxide which means there is no longer a channel between source and drain. There is no current flows from source to drain when no gate voltage is applied. Even if you apply voltage between drain and source, there will not be any current flowing through enhancement mode type of MOSFET. Now the channel, how do we create the channel here? The channel is created by applying proper gate voltage. This is the symbol you can see here. There is a dotted line between source and drain as there is no direct connection between, there is no basically channel between source and drain and the polarity as before is same. Then we have NMOS, PMOS and CMOS. Basically when we have source, drain and channel they are of N types 
and electrons are the charge carriers we call it n type of mosfet n channel mosfet if source drain and channel they are of p types and holes are the charge carriers then we call it p mos and when we use the combination of both n mos and p mos then it is called c mos we'll discuss all these things in detail in the coming video thank you so much for watching this video please like share and subscribe my channel concept tech 2018 for more such videos and keep watching this series to know more about the mosfets thank you